Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is keeping yourselves fine at home. Stay away from this virus. And I welcome you back to economics class. I am sure whatever we discussed in the last class, you will be able to recall or remember. So as you try to recall and remember, I want us to look around, okay? You look around uh, the things that is around you. It could be, you know, the wall, it could be the TV that you are looking at, it could be the mobile that you are looking at, it could be the shirts, the, you know, the clothes that you are wearing, uh, it could be the cup of tea that you have already kept on the table to drink later, or maybe a bottle of water which you want to drink uh, now or later. Now, if you look around, you will also see buildings, you know, you will also see uh, vehicles, you will also see vegetables, so and so forth. You will see so many. And if you look around, you know, the things that we see, it's infinite. We keep seeing new things almost every day. Now, you please try to recall the last topic we discussed in the last class. What was it? What was it? Can you remember? It's a good. We discussed the term good. You remember or not? So to let us recall the meaning, let's say any physical object, okay? Any physical object, be it man-made or natural, that commands a price in the market is called a good. If you still remember, that is the meaning of good. Now, before I winded up my class uh, in the last session, I was also trying to, you know, uh, read out the various uh, kinds of goods. Consumption goods, capital goods, final goods, intermediate goods, and when you go up to higher classes, you will come across even more classification of goods. But we want to stick on our textbook. They have identified four different types. Consumption goods, that's the first one. So. According to your textbook, consumption goods are those goods which is purchased or which is uh, own produced for self-satisfaction of wants. Did you get the point or not? Any goods which could be purchased, we buy, and which could be self-produced. Sometimes we also produce the goods ourselves for our satisfaction of wants only, to satisfy our wants. Those goods are called consumption goods. Remember or not, the reason why we say sometimes it's purchased, sometimes it's unproduced, is because we don't buy all the things. Sometimes we also produce ourselves. Suppose what happens is you want to eat vegetables. You can grow in your garden. Some, suppose you want to wear a shirt, you can buy it. So there are things we buy, there are things we uh, produce ourselves. However, when it comes to this concept, consumption goods, it means those goods which is purchased or self-produced for self-satisfaction of wants only. That you have to remember. For satisfaction of wants, sometimes we buy, sometimes we purchase. Those are called consumption goods. Clear or not? So these consumption goods has two different types. Number one, durable consumer good and number two, non-durable consumer good. So from the term, from the word itself, it clearly tells us that consumer, sorry, durable consumer goods are those goods which gives services over time or which gives services for a long period of time. So you can, you know, you wa might want to look at the port. These are some of the examples that I have mentioned on the board. You will also come across so many types of, uh, you know, examples mentioned in your textbook. So there are goods which we buy for our own satisfaction, and then that gives us services over time. That gives us uh, facilities or convenience for a long period of time. You want to look at vehicles. You know, the kind of car, the kind of vehicles that your parents purchased 20 years, 30 years back, we are still using it, or not. The kind of, uh, let's say, furniture that uh, your parents bought during your birthday, first birthday or second birthday, we are still using it, we are still sitting on it. And in fact, you are also sitting there now and watching this video, or not. Likewise, tools and implements, these are also, uh, I mean, uh, these are also goods which gives services for a long time. You know a DAO, 
which you can use it for a long period of time. Any kind of tools, it can be hammer, it can be, you know, any kind of implements that is used in the construction of a building, you use it for a long period of time. You know, you look around, you want to store your vegetables for, a, for, for maybe two, three days. So what you do is you buy a fridge and you store it there. It can be kept for a long time or not. Are you getting the point or not? So these are some of the example of durable consumer goods. Those goods which give services over time or for a long period of time will be called durable consumer goods. Second one is non-durable consumer goods. From the term itself, non-durable, meaning a good which cannot be used for a long period of time. A good which is completely used up at the time or at the moment of use. Those are called non-durable consumer goods. You look at the board, food. The food that you eat now is never coming back anymore. It will go into your stomach and then it goes down or not. So there are goods which are completely used up at the time of use and those are called non-durable consumer goods. And therefore, non-durable goods are called single-use good. Single-use good. Why? It is a single-use good because the good that you use now is never coming back anymore. The cup of tea that you have kept on the table to drink, you see, you drink it. After drinking the cup of tea, do you think it will come back again to your cup? No, that's never happening. The, the, the bottle of water that you kept on the table to drink, you drink it, you empty the bottle and see if it will come back again. No or not. So vegetables are also some. You eat, fruits are also some. You eat and then it is gone. It's never coming back anymore. And therefore, those goods which are completely used up at the time of use are called non-durable consumer goods. I hope it's clear. You know, the matchstick that you lit in order to uh, burn a fire, that matchstick is not coming back anymore. The cigarette that your uncle or maybe your neighbor smokes, the same cigarette stick, it's not coming back anymore. Are you all getting the point or not? So these are some of the examples of non-durable consumer goods. Okay, so I hope that, that is clear. We will now want to discuss capital goods. What are capital goods? Capital goods are, as per your textbook, fixed assets, all right? Capital goods are fixed assets which can be used repeatedly or which can be used continuously for producing other things with an aim of generating income. Are you getting the point or not? Those fixed assets which are, which are being used repeatedly or which are being used continuously with an aim of generating income are called capital goods. Capital goods are durable in nature, meaning capital goods are, uh, are those goods which gives services over time or which gives services for a long period of time. So, you know, what example should we make? Factories, plant and machineries, tools and implements. These, these are some I have just mentioned. Or it, could, it can be fridge, it can be the TV that you're watching, it can be mobile, so and so forth. Because these are things which can be used for a very long period of time or not. The same example that I want to mention. The tools and implements that your father possesses your, your father inherits from, from, from your grandfather, you are still using it or not. It's giving us services for a long period of time. Or from the factory, you know, this is a factory which has been running for 20 years, 30 years. Whenever you open up new plant and machinery, it does not just, you know, stay for a while. We keep using it for a long period of time. You want to also mention uh, what? Uh, these excavators. Have you heard uh, JCB, excavator? You know, during our time, we use our manual hands and labors to dig the soil, I mean to dig the soil, and you, uh, even for plague topping also, it is our hand that we used to do. But now, things has been, I mean, this has been replaced by machines. 
JCB can dig the soil uh, in one hour. It works a lot. And then even for plague topping the road also, because people use all these uh, latest machineries, it, we are able to cover two, three kilometers in a night or not. So those are called capital goods. And therefore, these capital goods, I am telling you, are durable in nature. However, at some point of time, capital goods will also have non-durable. All right, non-durable good. So non-durable capital goods are those goods which are used as raw materials. Are you all getting the point or not? So suppose you are a baker. So in order to produce kinds of biscuits, cakes, and you know, bread, what do you need? You need a floor. And the floor comes from wheat or not. So from this wheat, you are able to convert it into what? You're able to convert it into biscuits. So when you convert this floor into biscuits, you are completely using up that floor. That is not coming back anymore. That's why it is du non-durable capital goods or not. Furniture. In order to produce furniture, what do you need? You need wood or not. So when you, when you purchase this wood from the wood seller and convert it into a, uh, into a furniture seat that you're sitting on now, that wood is not coming back anymore. We have completely used up at the time of its use. Therefore, we say uh, non-durable consumer good is also a single-use good. Clear or not? So durable goods are those goods which give services over time. Non-durable goods are those goods which are called single-use good and are completely used up at the time of use. So I am sure you are now able to differentiate between consumption goods and capital goods. Later on, we also want to follow your textbook and therefore in your textbook, the next thing is final goods. So I am sure you, might, you must have already uh, acquired economics textbook. As I was telling you in the last class, unless you have textbook, it becomes harder for us to understand. So uh, our next topic is final goods and intermediate goods. We should be able to differentiate between these two. So what is a final good? Look at your textbook. It says all kinds of goods, which is meant either for consumption by consumers like you and I. I'm just writing in short form. <clears throat> Those goods which are meant either for consumption by consumers like you and I, or those goods which are meant for investment by production units or by firms, those goods are called capital goods. I'm repeating again. All goods which are meant either for consumption by consumers like you and I, or for investment, by production units or firms are called final goods. Final goods, in fact, are not meant for resale. Final goods are, in fact, not meant for transformation, meaning you, you get this particular good and you transform it into another good. No, that's not the point. Final goods are those goods which is meant either for consumption by consumers and for investment by investors without transforming it. All right, so these final goods are never meant for resale. These final goods are never meant for transforming it into another goods. So these are all very similar. All these can be a final good. It all depends on who buys the product. So food, all right, food, if an individual consumer like you and I, we purchase it for consumption, that is a final good. We purchase it for our own use. Clothes, if it is purchased by uh, consumers, individual consumers like you and I, we are buying it for our own consumption. And therefore, it's a final good. Vehicles, furniture, vegetables, so and so forth. Are you getting the point or not? Likewise, the same good can be purchased even by the production units, by the firms, for their own investment only, not to transform it. Suppose the food is now purchased by the investor, and the investor or the production units, they are not 
uh, transforming this food into other goods. They are buying it in order to feed or to give it as a lunch to the employees. Or not, it's an investment. Or clothes, which is purchased by, uh, by production units as an investment. The clothes is purchased by the production units from the, uh, from the shop, and then it is given to the employees to wear during work time. Or not, vehicles, if it is purchased by uh, household Households, individuals like you and I, it's a consumption, uh, I mean, uh, it's for consumption only, for our own use. The same vehicle, if it is purchased by, uh, by uh, production units, it'll be an investment. They purchased this vehicle to carry the, pr the products from their production unit, from their factory to the nearest market. Or the vehicle is purchased by production units or firms as an investment to carry or to pick up the employees who stays far away from the production unit. Are you getting that point or not? So what you should remember is final goods are those goods which, is, uh, which are meant either for consumption by consumers and households like you and I and for investment by production units or firms. Clear or not? So that's the meaning of final goods. And what you should remember is final goods are never meant for transforming it into other goods or final goods are never meant for resale. No, that will take place in the other level. So next we have intermediate goods. Intermediate goods, you want to follow your textbook, are those goods which are used as a raw material for further production. That's very important. So intermediate goods are those goods which are used as a raw material for further production of other goods and is to be resold in the same year. Are you getting the point or not? Suppose in 19... Sorry, we are already in 2000. So suppose in 2019, a production unit purchases this vehicle. A production unit purchases this vehicle and then he sells it in the same year in 2019. A, a dealer, a car dealer purchases this vehicle in 2019 and the same vehicle is sold out to the customer in the same year. That is an intermediate good because the good has already been resolved in the same year it was purchased. Getting the point or not? Likewise, intermediate goods are those goods which are used up as a raw material for further production. So in order to produce furniture, what is the raw material we need? You look around, what do we need to produce a wooden furniture? We need a wood. A tree. We have to chop down the tree, convert it into wood, and then it is converted into furniture. So a production unit will purchase the, the wood from the wood cutter and then converts it into a furniture. That is, further production of good is taking place. And therefore, this situation is called intermediate goods. A baker, in order to produce uh, types of biscuits, types of, uh, you know, all these kinds of eatables that we get in a bakery, what does he need? He needs a floor. It comes from wheat. So he purchases the floor and then he converts, he reproduces, further produces it into ready-made products. Those are called intermediate goods. And therefore, for one mark, intermediate goods are those goods which are used as a raw material for further production of other goods and is result in the same year, or as, as we follow your textbook, or for resale in the same year. So you purchase all these, you resell in the same year, that becomes intermediate goods. You purchase the raw material, I mean you purchase the raw material, you convert it into a ready-made product. That is still a, a, an intermediate good. All right, sometimes it's confusing. And therefore, what you should remember is the significance the significance or importance of 
knowing the difference between final good and intermediate good. Why is it important? I mean, let's first discuss, discuss about the distinction. We will discuss about the distinction between these two and later on we will discuss about the importance or significance. Why should we be able to distinguish between these two goods? Why? Because at the end of the day, it all depends on the end use. The end use made of the good. I have mentioned some examples. You will come across so many types of goods. To be able to differentiate between these two, it all depends on the end use made of the good. So suppose if a household, if a consumer purchases a fridge, it's summer, and especially down there in Timapur, it's you know very hot. Things get rotten very easily. We need something to store our vegetables, our edible items. Fridge. You buy this, if a household individual like you and I purchases this fridge, it is a final good. Getting the point or not? It is a final good because we have purchased this fridge for our own use, self-satisfaction of once, our consumption only. However, if the same fridge was purchased by a production unit, or if the same fridge was purchased by a retailer, this fridge becomes an intermediate good. Why? Because the retailer purchases this fridge from the wholesale market, from the wholesale shop, and then he sells it to the customer. Are you getting the point or not? The same example, uh, milk, which as a household, when you purchase it, we buy for our satisfaction of once. We are thirsty, I mean, we are tired, so, you know, sipping a cup of tea, uh, it, it gives us more energy. It gives up, I mean, it, it keeps us active. And therefore, when you purchase the milk as a household, when you purchase it, and then you use it in your kitchen, you drink, that is a final good. If the same milk was purchased by a restaurant, if the same milk was purchased by, by a hotel, the, the milk becomes an intermediate good, very easy. Why? Because the restaurants, the hotels, they buy this milk to serve it to the customers. They are reselling it again in the same year or not. A bicycle, you are, you are still <clears throat> a teenager. You, you look around, your friends are riding a bicycle and then you also want to ride. You ask your parents, your parents bought you one bicycle. Okay, fine, you are, a, you are an individual and then uh, you belong to household sector. You buy the bicycle, that becomes a final good. You buy it for your consumption only, for your own use. If the same bicycle was purchased by a retailer, what happens? The same bicycle becomes an intermediate good. Why? Because the retailer purchases the bicycle from wholesale market and they sell it to the customer. So there are so many examples. If we keep going, you know, it'll take us time, but just to let us understand, the distinction between these two is on the end use made of the good. Whether the good is purchased by a household or uh, the good is purchased by production units or firms. So that helps us to distinguish between final good and intermediate good. Okay, why? Why are these two goods important. What is the significance of understanding the difference between these two? Why? Mainly because of the fact that during national income accounting, which we might or might not do in the session, uh, because it covers in the later chapters, national income accounting. During national income accounting, what happens is we estimate the value of only the final goods, not the intermediate goods. So in the national income accounting procedures, we do not take intermediate goods, we take the value of only the final goods. Why? If we take 
what the value our national income accounting becomes overestimated. We will show large figures to the world, but back at home, our economy is still backward. It's still low. And therefore, you should remember, during national income accounting, we do not take the value of intermediate goods, we take only the value of final goods. That's why it is important, it is significant to know the difference between final good and intermediate good. Clear or not? I hope it's clear. So to follow your textbook, we now want to discuss on depreciation. Have you heard the word depreciation? Depreciation is a very important word in economics because uh, very often you will come across this even during national income accounting also. What is depreciation? It simply means, it simply means fall in the value of fixed capital asset. Are you listening or not? Please try to listen, please don't look around, you try to focus. So depreciation simply means the fall or decline in the value of fixed capital asset due to number one, normal wear and tear, and number two, foreseen obsolescence. I am repeating again, depreciation simply means fall or decline in the value of fixed capital asset due to normal wear and tear and foreseen obsolescence. If you guys are wondering why I'm not writing on the board, if you guys are still wondering why I'm writing very less on the board, it's because there is a reason. You will come to know in the latter part. Okay, so you know, you, ha you have to remember the two situations. There will be a fall in the value of your machine. Fixed capital asset can be any machine which is used in the, uh, in the construction activities or in the production activities. So this fixed capital asset can be your car, your vehicles, or it can be factories, plant, machineries, building, tools and implements, so on and so forth, the technology that we have. So number one is there will be a fall in the value of all these assets due to normal wear and tear. So we will, we will want to explain this first part. Suppose you have purchased a new phone. All right, you kept crying for the last two, three months and then finally your parents gave in. They bought you a new handset. You want to show around your friends because it's new, you are using it. And then it has a lot of, uh, lot of what do you call, uh, mm, games and uh, well, so many things are there in the, in, in the mobile. All right, the picture quality is also very nice. Uh, the RAM is also 4 GB or 5 GB and therefore you know you are able to use it uh, very fast. You want to play PUBG or whatever game that you play, you know you are able to beat all your friends because your mobile is new. It's giving you a very good uh, service. But over time, after three or four months since you kept using it, you don't even sleep because your mobile is new. You kept playing and therefore slowly and gradually the, the touch of your screen will go away. Slowly and gradually the picture quality of your camera will come down. Slowly and gradually virus comes in and starts attacking your, your applications. All right, and therefore slowly and gradually the value of your mobile is coming down. That is depreciation. Are you getting the point or not? You didn't do anything, you just kept playing. But just because you are normally using it, there will be a fall in the value of your asset. That is called normal wear and tear. All right, especially in rural areas, when rice meal was introduced for the first time, people, instead of pounding the, the rice on this wooden, uh, wooden implement that we normally use, have already diverted to uh, to rice meal. So what happens is the rice meal which was initially introduced in the village, it was very good. It was giving good results. In one hour, it is able to give us, you know, uh, uh, deans and deans of, what do you call it, uh, rice. 
But slowly and gradually, you realize that the belt is not smooth anymore. Even though it's, uh, even though the the rice are grinding, uh, sometimes uh, it gives us uh, it gives us uh, uh, poor quality rice. So what is how and why is that happening? Just because of the normal use, sometimes it also the value also goes down. That is called normal wear and tear. And the other one, foreseen obsolescence. What do you mean by foreseen obsolescence? Foreseen obsolescence meaning expected changes. It can come because of change in technology. It can come because of change in demand. It can come because of change in government's policy or not. You know, back in the day, people were using what we normally call steam engine to run the railways. But slowly and gradually, because of continuous research and innovation, diesel engine was invented. People were using diesel engine, and suddenly, electric engine has been introduced. So slowly and gradually, we might come up with other things as well. What I'm trying to tell you is, these are something which is expected to happen in the future. Foreseen obsolescence, foreseen changes. And therefore, we have a railway, a steam engine, but the life of this steam engine is you know, 20, 30 years. But what happens? Since people are not using that anymore because of change in technology, even though life is there, the value of the steam engine is gone. You have the diesel engine, people are not using it anymore, the value is gone. Likewise, you know, change in demand. What happens? You have, uh, you have, uh, what, ha what happened? Out of fashion, I mean, out of fashion is also one. You have a typewriter, you have a computer. Which one do you take? You take a computer and a printer because it's faster or not. So you have a typewriter, the life of this typewriter can go for 20, 30 years. People does not demand this anymore, or not. So the value of your typewriter has gone down. So things which is expected to happen, and then uh, the value goes down. Those are called foreseen obsolescence. Are we getting the point or not? So that's the meaning of depreciation. Another one is called capital loss. The value of fixed capital assets goes down. I don't know how. Maybe somebody come and steal the way. All right. Natural calamities happens. Earthquake happens. Landslide happens. And all the buildings are gone. The value of the building is gone. So when the value of this fixed asset goes down due to unforeseen obsolescence, due to unexpected changes, those are called capital loss and not depreciation. Getting the point or not? So depreciation happens because of normal wear and tear and foreseen obsolescence. Capital loss happens because of unforeseen obsolescence. Some examples are natural calamities. Some examples are uh, thefts, so and so forth. So that's the meaning of depreciation. Lastly, before I conclude the session, I want to look at your textbook. I mean, I want you to look at your textbook. Uh, it's given on home, page number 18. It talks about four sectors of an economy. There are four sectors of an economy. Follow your textbook, household sector, government sector, uh, sorry, household sector, producer sector, government sector, and, and what, what is the other one? Rest of the world. These are the four sectors which you will come across very often in the later chapters. I'm repeating again, household sector, government sector, uh, sorry, household sector, uh, producer sector, government sector, and the rest of the world. So uh, household sector, it talks about households, individuals like you and I. Uh, pr production sector, it talks about all the production units, pr uh, production firms which hires factors of production. And then government sector, which maintains law and order, uh, defense for the welfare of the people, and lastly, the rest of the world, to where our country does exports and imports do and from. Getting the point or not, so these are the four factors of production. In the next session, we will talk about commercial banking, commercial banks. So if you have time, you please want to go through once. Thank you.